can do. This guy says the horse can do. Of Handicappers Corner brought to you by the Derby Bar and Grill. I'm Mike Heads. We'll be going through this Sunday, August 5th, races at Hastings Racecourse. We do have seven races on tap. Once again, I'm on my own. Good buddy Drew Forster, uh, as of taping, still uh, awaiting uh, him and Stephanie's first child. So uh, we'll go it alone here on the Sunday program. We'll do. We, Drew has done his homework. He'll have his picks after the the final segment of the show, so uh, we'll get to those. But uh, we'll go through a brief analysis of the seven races. We'll start off with the Sunday opener in race number one, $3,000 claimers going six and a half furlongs. Uh, I'm heading down to the rail, to the, or pardon me, I'm heading to the four, uh, Womb Room Express. I kind of had the one uh, D's victor, but I picked it last time. But I'm going to go to the four, Womb Room Express. I kind of liked the run last time. I know he got caught by Slickster, but then I looked again. That was his first race since May. A pace horse that needs to be 100% fit. Might have needed the run. Uh, I think he's going to be even stronger this race. So I'm going to go to Womberham Express to hold off uh, maybe a fast closing D's Victor, who ran a good third last time to Bosco's Quick and now act. Coming back pretty quickly, though, in just a couple of weeks. But Womberham Express, I think this horse is pretty live in this spot. No other speed in here. I think he's uh, going to get things pretty... Uh, Pretty soft on the head end, so I think Womb Room will be tough to beat. And I put the uh, five horse uh, Evaluate, pretty classy old dude, in for third. He seems to run nothing but good races. Maybe lost a step or two in the last year, but uh, still a horse good enough to beat uh, a lot of them. And we should note, nice to see paired little Joe back in the starting gate. I know uh, starter Joe Gray probably happy he didn't get the one hole. As I recall, it's been five years since he's run. Now, here's a horse that's been off five years. And I think he had the one hole two or three times in his career, and he kept wheeling. Whenever he had the one hole, he just stop, turn, and drop the rider. And it happened two or three times. So uh, anytime they had the one hole, they seemed to scratch him. But uh, it's been five years since old Paradiddle Joe ran, and uh, it's great to see him back. And it's nice to see him in the three hole. So uh, hopefully a good trip for Paradiddle Joe. But I like four, one, and five in the Sunday opener. On to the second race. We've got some 5,000 claimers going six and a half furlongs. Phillies and mares here. Second half of your daily double. Got a six-pack set to go. Uh, I'm leaning to the three BC Cat. Pretty consistent mare. I've uh, been running strong races at the 7,500 level. Last time dropped in for the five. Couldn't quite hold off Anadu, who, but who benefited from a very strong pace that BC Cat had been forced to endure. So uh, I know BC Cat's going to have to go fast again with Include the Grand down on the inside, but I think she can sit the trip just on the outside of her, which is where she seems to be most comfortable. She kind of gets out a little bit on the turns. And I think she's a little more comfortable being outside of a horse, and I think she'll run a strong race. I put the two-horse flying Tiger in for second. She drops from 7,500 in for the five in search of a win. Uh, long time in between wins for her, but uh, perhaps might get a good tra trip tracking uh, those two speed fillies, the one and the three, and uh, Perhaps if things go right, she can win the money. And I put the six horse golden ratio. She's had her share of troubles uh, in for third. She's had a got shuffled back in her races. She's had no luck. Gets Amadeo Perez today, though, so that could be a plus. He seems to get good run out of horses, and they seem to get good trips with Amadeo aboard. But uh, once again, but this filly's facing a tougher field. More $7,500 horses seem to be creeping down to the 5000 level making these $5,000 races a little bit tougher. But uh, I went BC Cat over Vying Tiger and a golden ratio for third. and went 3-2-6 and six. on to the third race. $2,400 claimers that have not hit the board this year. Not been 1-2-3 at Hastings. Uh, so they have to have been fourth or worst or you're not eligible. Uh, going six and a half furlongs. I'm going to the one beautiful breeze. I always like this filly. She ran fourth last time. Probably the best thing that she could have done was not run third. But uh, she ran a good fourth, only beating the length for second. Not a tough spot. Probably can get the lead. Uh, I, I think she can get to the top in here. Anytime she gets to the lead or close to it, she's generally pretty tough. Uh, I definitely like her chances today. I put the three-horse five-yard penalty in for second. Three-year-old tackling older in here, but I, I think the class relief will help her. Uh, she did run for 4,000 on two last time, but uh, this is even easier running in a, horse, a race where the horses haven't run one, two, three this year. Uh, gets uh, Amadeo Perez as well, so that's a big plus. And I put the seven horse, Little Red Jet. I'm going to give her another chance. Kind of had a little layoff after, uh, after being uh, losing the rider in a, in, in a race uh, back in May where there was a spill and a bunch of horses fell over each other and uh, this horse obviously needed some time after that race and uh, she tried to, ch tried to chase a pretty fast pace, 
took its toll on her. I think she'll get something out of that race. Moves outside. She's had the race under her belt. I think of quite a few more reasons to like Little Red Jet as well as a little easier test as well. So don't give up on Little Red Jet out of the good Len Kazmersky burn. So I went one, three, and seven. Not a race I fell in love with. Just a, you know, these mares aren't the most trustworthy and that's why they've run fourth or worse, or fourth, fifth, or sixth in their last, uh, in their 2012 start. So uh, always tough to get a little overconfident on these kind of horses, but one, three, seven for me in the third. On to the fourth race, uh, Maiden 10 Granders going only three and a half furlongs. Got some two-year-olds here. Uh, mixed bag of Colts and Phillies. Uh, I'm going to the six, Poogie. Poogie ran a good second last time to Federality, who we'll see on Monday on BC Cup Day in the debutante. Enrique Gonzalez re-rides for Sylvia Gregory, whose two-year-olds continue to do very well this year. Her Lord Harlow, Lord Lady Henrietta. A lot of her two-year-olds are, are, have done extremely well this spring. She gets them ready to go. And here's another one, Poogie. Uh, that was a good race when dropped at this level, and I think this horse will be awfully tough to catch. Put the one horse, uh, Stone Ridge Raider, out of the Ron Principe barn. I caught Ron on a horse earlier this year on Principe's Herbie, and I'll try and get another one here. Uh, a Philly, a a colt that showed some speed last time going two turns, though, a little bit better than he did at the maiden allowance level. But I think the company change and the distance change is going to help Stone Ridge Raider. It's going to give him a shot on the cutback to three and a half furlongs. And I put the three horse, Stormy Freeway, out of the Harold Barraby outfit, uh, daughter of Storm Victory. They're bred to be pretty fast. Uh, good works, 36 flat, leading rider. Might tip you off that this one could be live with Amadeo in the saddle. So uh, keep an eye on the three stormy freeway. I went six, one, and three. Uh, anytime you're dealing with two-year-olds still going three and a half, you must, you know, be cautious. Don't uh, go overboard. But uh, you know, all it takes is a, a kind of a tardy break, and the race is over for you going three and a half furlongs. So you need some luck as well. All right, on to the fifth race. Uh, Maiden 10 Granders going six and a half furlongs. Uh, got a big gate of 10 of them going postward, a big field. I went to the one Oscar Award, uh, dropping from Maiden 40 down here for the 10. I thought uh, a, a better than looked effort chasing a 21 and 3, 45 flat fractions last time. Tired to run seventh, but uh, this is a lot easier to sign. It's a, this is apples and oranges here. This is a big difference for Oscar Award. This horse gets in a lot easier, and uh, I think this horse will go wire to wire. I think his main competition might be a first-time starter, number eight contact man out of the Pete Gregory barn. I like that the mare Camberley. Uh, Camberley was a very nice mare that raced for Gary McNeil. I believe it was just pretty much for Peter Stephen, uh, who, who was the trainer for Gary McNeil at the time. But Camberley was a nice mare that ran good races. I think Jim Brown had her as well. But a mare that won a lot of races. Not going to be a surprise to see her offspring be very gifted. So uh, the works are good. Maybe keep an eye on the eight contact man. And the third spot, I put the three horse uh, Hampton Court out of the Troy Taylor barn. Uh, this one's bred to be nice out of Annie Z. Have to clear to Canada and many others. Uh, El Sinaloenza. But uh, Hampton Court, obviously some issues getting him to the races. This, is, this will be his first start uh, as a three-year-old in August. So, But uh, gets Fernando Perez, good outfit, good rider, good post. Aggressively spotted for 10, so keep an eye on this one in the paddock. Watch him. This is a good race to actually skip down to the paddock and maybe watch them maybe for, for further clues because a lot of horses haven't really run. I like the one Oscar reward. Don't get me wrong. Uh, this horse definitely is live. But uh, if you're looking for the balance of the triact exactor, triactor, superfector, anything, get down to the paddock because there's about five firsters, six firsters in here that you might want to keep an eye on and, and maybe uh, might tip you off as to who might be live. But uh, I went one, eight, and three in a very uh, very good fifth race at Hastings. On to the sixth race, 17-5 uh, claimers, non-two, non-three. They're sprinting six and a half furlongs, fillies and mares. I've gone to the two horse. Undo it on the class drop from 25 in here for the 17-5 conditional level. I think there's going to be a bit of speed in here. You got the one, Victorious Spirit. You got the three, lots of cash. Uh, the six, Danny's Chant. The seven, Reveling. I think the fraction should be honest. And I think Undo It gets the trip just in behind them. This filly runs any of her, either of her last two races. She wins the dough. Definitely the two Undo It. Very live in this one. I put the six horse, Danny's Chant. Wow, what a run for Twink uh, Baumgartner. Uh, this Philly was good to go. Wow, off a big layoff, stepped up to 17.5, crushed uh, lots of cash in Tickle Ode at uh, 11, 12 to 1, in 18 and 1 on a wet, fast racetrack. That was a huge effort. As long as the horse didn't get knocked out by doing that, that's the whole thing. Uh, sometimes when horses run a big race like that, off a big layoff, they come back, they're a little flat because they expanded so much energy 
and uh, might not come back at the same level that you saw that day. But we'll see. I got her in for second, and I put the three, lots of cash. She ran second that day. I got her in for third I for her to rebound as well. But undo it, I think, looks the best on paper in here. Might be a good key in your pick threes and pick fours. I went two, six, and three in the Hastings six on the seventh race. Uh, uh, we got a field of uh, seven here, a mile and a sixteenth will be the trip. Three-year-old Phillies going 20, for 25,000. I went to the four, Commanderous. I, I see a pretty good pace in here. You got the, definitely got the one long lorry going out there for position. The three of the speedy, what a score stretching out. The five, Tenzel, six by for now, seven, half, three-quarters of the field wants to go to the front and hasn't proven that they can go along. So that really helps the two Yang and the four. Commandress, I think this is a solid 4-2 or 2-4 exactor. I went to the 4 Commandress to win it. Uh, this was compromised by the slow pace last time. Yang had the better trip, sat off of the slow fractions, won the money. Commandress sat back, had to go 4 deep, didn't get the best of trips. I think this time Commandress gets the better trip and Yang might might uh, not get as cushy as a trip as she did last time. So I'm going to go 4-2, and I put the one long lorry in for third. I went 4-2-1 and one in the seventh. On to the eighth and final on the uh, Sunday, August the 5th program. Got some $40,000 optional uh, claimers, maidens, uh, going six furlongs, two-year-olds. Scratch the eight, cross rail court. Scratch number eight, cross rail court. This one's been entered back uh, tomorrow on the Monday BC Cup day. They're going to give, give it a go in the nursery. So we're down to a field of eight, going the six furlongs. I think it's a field of one. Number nine, Gambino. Wow, runner-up effort to take a stablemate, take a back road, going three and a half. Came back to run in the newest spinster, ran second to a, a very nice two-year-old called Bridge Jumper. Was beaten two and three-quarter lengths and one eleven and three. Wow, that was a fast time. Gets back in against Maidens. This is the spot. This horse is live. Gets the outside. It's a good draw for this horse to just kind of gallop up and get in position. He's a key. I, I think he's a solid key in all wagers, tries, supers, pick fours, pick fives. Gambino's the play today. I put the six, Ludwig in for second, a pretty good third behind Red Red Rose. And uh, Innocent Love going three and a half. Comeback work's been good. The barn's been hot. Dino's been just going great guns. Definitely can't leave out Ludwig. Probably the best, most, only danger uh, to Gambino. And I put the four horse, the Philly Tempered Steel, out of the Brian O'Connell barn. She was a good closing fourth in the Bamboo Dream race. She took advantage of some fast fractions and uh, closed up well. The, definitely one that could improve. I went nine, six, and four. The old 649 tractor box. And, uh, but uh, nine, six, four for me in the Sunday finale. Well, that'll do it for the analysis of the uh, Sunday program. We'll move on to uh, both my, mine and Drew's picks. And we'll start off with my selections in, on the Sunday program. In the first race, I went to the four, four uh, Woombroom Express. I went four, one, and five. In the second, I went to the three, BC Cat, three, two, six. Third race, number one, a Beautiful Breeze, one, three, seven. In the fourth race, number six, Poogie, six, three, one. In the fifth race, number one, Oscar Award. Definitely like him, one, eight, and three. In the sixth race, number two, Undo It, two, six, and three. In the seventh race, number four, Commandress, over the two and one. In the ninth, and the eighth in finale, Number nine, uh, Gambino, nine, six, and four. Now we'll, on to Drew's picks. And Drew likes the one, D's Victor. He went one, four, and five in the first. In the second race, he went to the three, BC Cat, three, six, and two. Third race, he went to the three, uh, five-yard penalty, three, seven, and one. In the fourth race, he also agrees with me on the six, Poogie, six, three, and one. In the th fifth race, he went to the three, Hampton Court, he went three, one, and two. Sixth race, number two, undo it, over the six and seven. The seventh race, he went to the four, Commandress, four, two, and seven. And in the eighth, he went to the nine, Gambino. He's going to go nine, six, and one. There's Drew's picks for the Sunday, August 5th program. Well, that'll do it here for Handicapper's Corner. Once again, thank you very much, everyone, for tuning in. Hopefully, we've given you a little insight, hopefully some good information that you can make uh, some winning wagers on the Sunday program. Don't forget to tune into our Monday BC Cup program, early post 12.50 on BC Cup Day. If you can't make it out to Hastings, don't forget to come right here to the BC, to the Derby Bar and Grill right here at 176 and Zero Avenue. So come on out and enjoy some great food and great uh, thoroughbred simulcasting action here at the Derby Bar and Grill. Well, that'll do it for this edition of Handicapper's Corner. Uh, we look forward to seeing everyone next time. Good luck, everyone. We'll see you at, on Handicapper's Corner for the Monday edition. 
the horse can do, can do, can do. I pick him Valentine, cause on the morning line, the guy's got him bigger than mine.